Hello friends, in this video we'll be taking a look at the autosomal DNA results, predicted phenotype and a couple other things of an early Bronze Age Jordanian. Uh, 11th Bronze Age, I think that would fall into the what is known as Canaanites in the biblical sense. I'm not exactly sure if early Bronze Age is quite Canaanite, and, but I think it's Canaanite from the 11th. That's what I think it is. Uh, it does fall into this kind of timeline and this kind of um, area, right? So it's an early Bronze Age individual from Jordan. Uh, she's a woman. Uh, her mitochondrial DNA is X2M. I'm not sure where that's most common, but it is what it is. Now we're going to move on to her autosomal DNA. And uh, when it comes to her phenotype, Nashakot predicts for her the following phenotype. Let's look at it. She's got dark brown color eyes. She's got black hair. Actually, not not even a single percentage chance of green or blue with a center or blue eyes. So definitely very dark eyes. Uh, definitely very black hair. And it looks like intermediate or olive skin is the prediction for her. And definitely not light or fair skin. So she's dark in skin color. <coughs> Alright. And this is her predicted eye color with the uh, with the web version of Nashakot. Let's go ahead and take a look at her OCA2 and HERC2 eye color cal calculator results. This is taking into account only her genotypes in OCA2 and HERC2. And if you take into account only her genotypes in OCA2 and HERC2, it seems that she's got light brown eyes instead of dark brown. So it looks like some of the other genotypes she has contributed to her scoring dark brown eyes instead. Uh, when it comes to the OCA2 blonde hair and blue eyes panel, uh, what's interesting is she actually has blue eye haplotype 1. Alright, that's interesting. So she's got blue eye haplotype 1, but she does not have blue eye haplotype 2. Or this. Oh wait, no, she actually does have this. She's got to the route variants here, but she does not have blue appetite three or blue appetite four. Overall, she's pretty pretty dark, right? A lot darker than what's typical for modern Europeans. But I guess for her ethnicity, this would be a pretty typical result. Okay. We're gonna go ahead and look at her polygenic risk scores now. For the polygenic risk scores, she seems to have uh, very below average odds of schizophrenia. She seems to have pretty high score for type 2 diabetes. She seems to have a pretty below average score for Alzheimer's and for the cancer section, which is something I added just yesterday. Uh, she's got 5 risk variants for breast cancer out of 10, which is very extreme. Um, very extreme, so very high risk score for breast cancer. And she's got 8 risk variants for testicular cancer out of 16. This is not so extreme, but once again, I would say also pretty high. What's, it's interesting that she's got this high score for breast cancer. That's kind of, we're going to find out why. Alright, so starting with the monogenic traits, she's got a gene called Valmet variation, meaning Valmet genotype, intermediate speed of dopamine reuptake and intermediate dopamine levels, alright, between warrior and warrior. She's also between warrior and warrior in, in MAOA, very interesting. So overall, uh, chances are she's got intermediate activity of the MAOA and COMT enzymes, and these are the enzymes that break down dopamine, so she's got intermediate speed of dopamine breakdown. Alright. One no go learner variant in ZRG2 Spiofenzine Pro, so once again intermediate. Uh, this time it's density of distribution of D2 dopamine receptor sites in the brain, not so much dopamine itself. Um, she does not have the, a, the A1 allele in TAC1, alright, interesting. Uh, she has got short form 5 HTCLPR. So just like a typical person, she's got short form 5 HTCLPR, slightly higher odds of stuff like depression. Um, Problems with transporting serotonin. It's very rare. The opposite genotype, like the long form 5 HTTLPR genotype, is super rare and you know, very few people have it. I do, but like very few people aside from me do. Um, she does not carry the European lactose persistence mutation and she's got two variants for higher levels of empathy in OXTR. Very good. Not a sociopath. Um, she does not have type 1 diabetes. But it seems that for her score for type 2 diabetes, a lot of it was contributed by her result 
uh, in other genotypes, in other variations that are not shown on the screen here, because none of this is, is even in, in the file. For hemochromatosis, you know what's interesting about hemochromatosis for her? Is that she has the uh, his 63 ASP variant. She's got two here. So she's got two copies of the H63D variant and likely suffers from hemochromatosis, which is kind of crazy, uh, because this is most typical in Northwest Europeans. Uh, like it's it's called it's called the Celtic curse for a reason because it's very common and well it's not very common it's not very common anywhere but it's present in Northwest Europe and that's why it's colloquially known as the Celtic curse and it's very interesting that she's got uh, this genotype right here but I don't think it would matter too much because women generally don't suffer from hemochromatosis it's a very male disease uh, if you don't know what that is, it's basically like iron overload. You got too much iron accumulating in your bodies and it starts to mess with your liver and your kidneys and everything starts to like fail and you just kind of die if you don't treat it. Alright, for Alzheimer's, uh, she does not have any APOE2 alleles in APOE, so okay. Uh, no risk variance in APOE, very good. Um... AA here, which is the typical gene type, leads to slightly increased risk of myopia. Alright, so she does not have the GLL here that protects against myopia. No micro-P, good for her. Um, impaired muscle performance, likely endurance athlete rather than power athlete. Interesting. And she's got two fat gene variants, NFTOs, RS 9939609, nine, much higher odds of obesity and sleep apnea. So she's got a little bit of a uh, predisposition to being overweight. One variant for increased pain sensitivity in SCN9A, kind of rare, kind of uncommon. Uh, when it comes to EDAR, no shovel shift incisors and not East Asian in ancestry. Uh, she's also not an Asian flusher. Uh, you know how some people of East Asian ancestry have uh, this. It happens to them when they drink alcohol, they flush up and they get addicted much quicker and they don't tolerate alcohol all that much. Um, that's because they lack some sort of enzyme that you need to digest it, but, or, I don't know, something, I don't, <laughs> but yeah, uh, she's not an Asian flusher, good for her. Lower odds of cannabis-induced psychosis, good for her. Nowadays, I think the TLU here is most common in uh, Spanish people. Uh, I'm not sure exactly, but I think, I don't sh I'm not sure why, but it's Spanish people who uh, have the highest frequency of the TLU, who are, like, best at, uh, I guess, best at, um, not getting psychosis when they smoke cannabis. Um, she's not a carrier of Occutaneous Albinism Type 1B mutation, not albino, good for her. And no risk variants for familiar Mediterranean fever, good for her. Uh, for M MTHFR panel, alright, she seems to have healthy genotype here in MTHFR, no problems uh, processing folic acid. Um, TG here, which leads to possibly fol impaired folate metabolism. And AA here, which is a common genotype, and it leads to slightly higher than average blood pressure. Now for the cancer span, we're going to find out why she's got so much, so many risk variants for breast cancer. And I think, I think this is why. Yeah, this is why. So you see, this is uncommon. This is uncommon for people to have this kind of genotype. Very uncommon. Uh, she might have had breast cancer actually just by looking at this because it's pretty uncommon and um, Well, this is why this is for the st testicular cancer, but we don't really care about that too much What about leukemia? Let's see for leukemia. She's got Common genotype lower risk of leukemia looks like pretty much average odds for leukemia. All right so this was um did I miss anything? Okay, I didn't miss anything. Okay, now we're gonna go on to the ethnic calculator portion of the video. I'm gonna show you her result with my calculator, and then I'm gonna show you her result with some. Well, for GD match, maybe I'll show you her result with um, Eurogenes K13. So with my calculator, she's closest to Algerians. Not not even Algerians plural, more like Algerian singular. Uh, it's just one individual from Open and Picos Algerian. Followed by that is Af Afghans, which are two people. Uh, followed by that is Bactrians, Chimera, mercenary from the Caucasus, BMAC, uh, Medieval, and Alpine Caucasians. So that's kind of what it looks like she's closest to. Let's go ahead and see uh, mixed mode. Alright, for the mixed mode, 
she's getting modeled as a mixture of Egypt Ptolemaic mummy plus Algerian plus Sri Lankan very interesting what about reduce it to four when we reduce it to four <coughs> she's getting modeled as a mixture of Algerian Israelite Tafarout and Sri Lankan so there's um with my calculators with my um, ethnicity calculator there seems to be a little bit of an affinity to South Asians right Sri Lankan South Asians what about five populations Algerian plus Israelite plus Sri Lankan plus Tafarout plus Egyptian Ptolemaic mummy so uh, you see my my um, ethnicity calculator finds a little bit of South Asian in her very interesting now we're going to move on to Admixture Studio. Alright, now for the GED match slash Admixture Studio portion of the video. This is what she scores with Eugene's K13. Um, she's scoring 47% East Mediterranean, mostly East Mediterranean and Red Sea, but there is a little bit of West Asian here as well. Uh, I'm not really seeing that much South Asian drift. There's only 1% South Asian and 0.2% Oceanian, so I guess that's what my uh, version my my ethnic calculator um, confused for the um, Sri Lankan right but with the Oracle we see it's a very typical very typical Arab result looks like a mixture of a uh, Yemeni Jewish plus Sardinian or Yemeni Jewish plus Saudi it's not even necessarily a very Levantine result actually it's more of a peninsular Arab to my to my understanding result um, is that what else is there? There's Yemeni Jew plus Moroccan, Yemeni Jew plus Bedouin, Yemeni Jew plus Tunisian. A mixture of Yemeni Jew and North African is what it looks like, North African or European. Um, closest to Yemeni Jews, followed by Saudis, followed by Bedouins, and only fourth place come Palestinians. Um, people like Jordanians and Samaritans come even further, Syrians come even further. So, yeah, this is more of a um, peninsular Arab result, actually, rather than rather than Levantine and with the eight mode population eight population approximation so imagine you have like eight great grandparents and this is kind of what it is trying to approximate what each of these eight great grandparents would have been like so with the eight population approximation getting modeled as a mixture of mostly Yemeni Jew plus a little bit of Saudi plus a little bit of Moroccan all right so yeah very um, very heavily, um, what is it called? Peninsular Arab. Well, thanks for watching until the end. You can download this file in 23andMe format from link which is in the description. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed um, my video. Goodbye.